how can we correct this in balance? Um, if anyone wants to turn to the last page there, uh, how do we correct this in balance? Is the adjustment appropriate for this type of lesion? I've talked to different doctors and discussed this with peers, and you would think if this basal ganglia is not working, we want to excite the basal ganglia to cause inhibition of the thalamus, that we would want to adjust contralaterally to go up and excite the basal ganglia. If we did that, if we went the other way and excited up, it would hit the thalamus first. It would hit the thalamus, go up to the cortex, and then loop around to the basal ganglia. So why is that a problem? Because our job, and if you remember, the function of the basal ganglia is to inhibit the thalamus. So if you adjust on the contralateral side, before you get the basal ganglia pathway, you're actually going to excite that contralateral thalamus on the way to trying to excite the BG. So you're actually trying to do something that's contradictory to what the function of the basal ganglia does. So this leads us to the question, is adjusting the contralateral side really appropriate for this type of lesion? Not, not really. At least some people don't believe so. So how do we excite the BG without using a motor pathway? Because any adjustment is going to go up the contralateral side and excite the, uh, the opposite thalamus. Well, we have other loops. If you remember from the first page, oculomotor fibers run through here, limbic fibers run through here, and the prefrontal cortex. So I have listed here a few things that we can do that doesn't involve the motor pathway, but involves other ways that will first excite the cortex, then the basal ganglia, thereby bypassing the thalamus first. So, some um, alternatives, cognitive enhancing activities. We want to excite the prefrontal cortex. You could have them do complex planning activities. You could have them devise a schedule. You could have them, I have listed here, divided into left and right brain activities. The reason I did left and right brain activities, you could do specific things for the cortex, is because when you have a basal ganglia lesion, if you can see, it loops around to that same side cortex. So, if this is the right cortex, and this is the left cortex, and I have a basal ganglia lesion on the right side, I'm probably going to have a right brain hemisphericity with that. And to fix that, we would do right brain activities. I just have a couple listed here. Right brain is more functioning with conceptual activities like word problems, comprehensive learning tasks. You could even do art. You could have them have facial expression games where you have to guess the expression that you're making. Left brain activities, math. Math problems are always good. Linear problems and puzzles would be good. Uh, another activity that we have listed here uh, that you could do to excite the basal ganglia and bypass the thalamus is to do saccades. Now we know Pursuits works the cerebellum a good amount, but we don't really want to do that because if we look at the cerebellum, it's still going to go up and excite the thalamus on the way to the cortex. So we don't want to do cerebellum, but saccades that we learned earlier, we're looking back real quickly from side to side, is going to be mostly cortex. So. Oh, sorry. I was just going to add a point. Also, the reason for saccades instead of a pursuit is that specifically the oculomotor loop that this is talking about is specifically the frontal eye field. So again, saccades are what we're going to want to do to um, do some therapy to that as well. So that's what it specifically is. Yeah, because frontal eye field as far as the oculomotor loop, which you said earlier. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. All the input from the oculomotor Reinforce loop. Reinforcing that. Perfect. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So if you had a left brain basal ganglia slash hemisphericity, you would want to have them saccade to the right, close their eyes, look back center, saccade to the right. And we'll do a little bit of that tomorrow. Russ? Would you also be able to do um, just any kind of movement on the contralateral side, or is that the same as adjusting? Well, if I do some exercises that some of the neurodocs do and grab on my arm, it's, what's exciting first? Thalamus. It's going to be cerebellum, then to the thalamus, and then the cortex. So it's hard to really deal with the basal ganglia. Uh, it's even hard to really analyze and diagnose it, which we're going to do tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be all um, tests. So that's why we're doing so much talking today, is we're just going to reinforce the concepts and do nothing but different exam tests tomorrow. Uh, but we do want to avoid motor activities if the condition is really bad. Uh, so saccades, again, and right brain, 
my right uh, frontal cortex is going to push my eyes to the left, so I want to cicade to the left for right brain lesion. And also going down to number three, using colored lenses specific for your hemisphericity is also a way to take out some of the visual input. Um, and you can use red colored lenses on the side of the hemisphericity. Honestly, I'm not too familiar with the colored lenses, so maybe you could say a brief thing about the, the red color. I'm not that familiar either. Anybody? I think what Adam said was that the red lens red decreases, more. Yeah. decreases more than the blue lens. Yeah. So because the, the visual lens. field goes across, you find mm -hmm. the side that is low and you decrease it less. Okay. So you want to find the side that's high and decrease it more by placing the red lenses on the side of the hemispheric. Yeah. So there's more decrease of input to the side that is higher. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Usually, the, if you're not familiar with the glasses, it's, a, it's glasses that half of it is the red lens and the other half is a blue lens, and then the other side is the same. So if the blue is on the right, on the other side the blue is going to be on the right. So overall, you get, um, is that clear? Yes. Okay. Sorry. So I'll put red on the side of hemisphericity. Yes. yes. So that the other side is decreased more than the side of hemisphericity. So, yeah, it's basically just all about trying to find ways to take out some visual stimulus and focus on the area of the brain that needs it most. Uh, other things you can do, we have the limbic pathway that runs through the same system. So we can do things to excite that area and bypass the thalamus again, doing activities, even simple things like watching a movie, a real funny movie, laughing is a great way to excite the limbic system. I also have here looking through old scrapbooks and, create, and just um, talking about memories with your family uh, if you had back in the day, not only will that excite the limbic system, but also, also the prefrontal cortex because they're thinking about their past memories. Um, another one, stimulating the olfactory. Cranial nerve one, the olfactory smell, is the only uh, cranial nerve that doesn't jump to the other side of the cortex. So it doesn't go to the thalamus right away. It'll go up and excite the basal ganglia on that side of the cortex. So you can put a scent or a smell on that side of the nostril that will go up to the same side of the cortex to excite the basal ganglia, the cortex, and all of that part of the hemisphericity. And I also have listed that there are right and left brain scents that excite those areas more. Uh, right brain is more strong, powerful scents, and the left brain is excited more with fragrant, um, just more pleasant smells. And those are listed for you. Um, this is a complex subject. This is probably one of the most the hardest uh, subject to go through in basal ganglia and identify. Uh, and there's not a whole lot of tests just for the basal ganglia. It's really a process of elimination, looking at first, does this person have motor problems in the upper lower neurons? Do they have sensory problems? Do they have cerebellar problems? And once we take all the other conclusions out, we're basically left with the basal ganglia. So it's more of a process of elimination. That's why tomorrow we're going to do lots of different tests for different areas and try and zero in on the effects of could this actually be a basal ganglia lesion or could it be a cerebellar problem. <clears throat> but it's an important subject because if it is a basal ganglia problem, this is like the one time that we, we say that we shouldn't really adjust in this area. And I think it's an important concept to recognize when and when to use the treatment and the tools in your belt that we're given. It's not just about one method or multiple methods, but what is going to help this person with their individual problem. Uh, I just want to wrap up with that tomorrow. Uh, I want everyone to be great if you guys can get here as close to 920 as possible. And also, everyone who has their neurology tools to bring them, because we're going to do a list of motor sensory tests. Actually, it's mostly motor tests. And we're going to pair up with some of the senior vets of this group with some of the people who are just starting out to really get a better feel for this. Uh, at the end, we're also going to kind of discuss what we found and do some conclusions to reinforce all the material, because I know it can get pretty pretty depth, pretty uh, filling. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys. Uh, and